Now to a CNN exclusive, the Department of Justice may be taking steps to indict music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Two sources close to the investigation. The Department of Justice may be moving to indict music mogul Sean Now, according to a CNN exclusive. Diddy Combs, according to two people with knowledge of the inquiry, a federal grand jury, Diddy's accusers may soon come forward, but it's not a guarantee. Fame and money can attract a nasty, caning spirit. I want all the girls to look at young Miami and use her as a shining example of what happens when you let men ruin your life, career, and yourself. Diddy is under pressure as federal investigators step up their investigation following raids on his mansions in Miami and Los Angeles in March. They found video footage, and they are reaching out to people they recognize from those recordings. You can guess who's getting entangled in this mess. Yes, it would be Diddy's ex, Young Miami. She has been in the news a lot lately. And now that she has been identified as an accomplice in the FBI's investigation against Diddy, it appears that she could be in hot water. Diddy is going to start to get hot. Big time rumors state that the federal authorities are preparing to prosecute him. According to CNN, federal investigators are getting ready to present witnesses before a grand jury in New York City. This is the first significant development since the federal government raided his locations in Florida and California in March. Following the raids on March 25, people have been asking questions about whether the government had discovered anything or if the case was over. However, CNN is reporting that potential witnesses may soon be contacted to provide testimony. Potential witnesses have been informed, but the federal government is still gathering information and calling in more people, so there is still a lot of material to unearth. Legal Eagles has been heavily involved in this case, highlighting the government's silence up until this point. She was taken aback by this update, realizing that the feds have been working hard behind the scenes. It appears that they may have uncovered some juicy information during those raids, which could advance the investigation and possibly implicate comms in the interim. Bradford Cohen, a representative prominent figures such as Drake and Kodak Black, are not surprised at all. They have been speculating for weeks that a grand jury was probably in session going through a ton of evidence and potential charges against residences. According to Cohen, depending on who receives immunity and who flips, this might include years of criminal behavior and possibly a large number of co-defendants. While the Feds have kept silent, Cohen expected that an indictment will be returned within a month. Diddy's world hasn't been the same since Friday, May 17, when CNN shockingly releases a 2016 surveillance tape that purportedly shows comms abusing Cassie Ventura in a hotel corridor. This video supports some of the statements Cassie made in her lawsuit, which she filed in November of last year, accusing comms of years of abuse. The lawsuit was resolved the following day with the allegations refuted by Coles's lawyer, but the footage paints a very different picture. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life, Sometimes you got to do that I was up, I mean, I hit rock bottom. Combs didn't mention Cassie's name likely due to the terms of the lawsuit settlement two days after that video aired. Combs posted a cheesy apology video on Instagram talking about his darkest times and hitting rock bottom. Diddy went on to say that he sought out expert assistance. I fully accept responsibility for the things I did in that video. I was horrified when I did them, and I'm disgusted now that I went and sought professional assistance. My apologies to Dade backfired, as most people saw it as damage control rather than sincere regret. Later, Cassie thanked everyone on Instagram for their support, stating that this was just the beginning of her healing journey. She also added more drama by emphasizing the significance of believing victims and reaching out to those who are afraid. I am heartbroken that Cassie must relive the horror of her abuse, and my heart goes out to her, because I know exactly how she feels, and through my empathy, it has triggered my own trauma, 
wrote Misa Hilton, the mother of Calm's son Justin, in a support post for Cassie. These young people were raised by women who only wanted what was best for them. We have always been united in our efforts to support each other's aspirations and have placed God first in education. When Cassie at last spoke, she said, Thank you for everything, my family, friends, strangers, and those I haven't met yet. The love pouring has made a place where my younger self can now settle and feel safe, but this is just the beginning. Domestic abuse is the problem. It broke me down to a person I never thought I would become. Though I am better now, I will never fully recover from my past. I appreciate everyone who has taken the time to take this matter seriously. My only request is that everyone be open to believing victims. Diddy's situation seems to only get worse from the beginning because, before he knew it, two more civil suits were filed against him. At this point, Diddy, please turn yourself in because, well, the statute of limitations has run out. Come on, bring your ass back. Crystal McKinn is suing Diddy in court, claiming that she was drugged and sexually assaulted at his NYC studio in 2003. To recap, McKinn, a 22-year-old model at the time, met Diddy at a men's fashion week event where he hyped up her modeling career and promised to help her make it big. Fast forward to the studio visit, where Diddy's crew gives McKinn a joint, hyping it up, little knowing that it was laced with who knows what. She eventually feels pressured into smoking more and swilling back drinks until she loses consciousness. Next, there is the bathroom scene, where Diddy is said to lead her there and force her into a sexual act. After discovering something horrible has happened, Mickin goes into a depressive spiral, hating herself and afraid Diddy would take revenge. Now she is fighting back, suing for damages for the agony and suffering she has gone through. She wakes up in a taxi. Target Diddy is not the only target of the case. His record companies and clothing line are also being sued, adding gasoline to the legal fire. Crystal has been waiting for this day to arrive for more than 20 years, and she stored the clothes she was wearing that day in a plastic bag. Another lawsuit was filed by April Lampros, who claimed that Combs had harmed her numerous times between 1995 and the early 2000s, even compelling her to take ecstasy and have sex with his then-girlfriend, Kim Porter. Lampros was a young student with aspirations of becoming a fashion designer when she got sucked into Diddy's world of gifts and promises. But things quickly turned sour and the relationship turned toxic. She claimed that Diddy had forced himself on her in a Manhattan hotel room in 1995. The following day, she awoke feeling betrayed and confused. And things only got worse, according to Lampros, who describes another horrific event in which Diddy allegedly coerced her into engaging in sexual acts in front of witnesses. Yes, Diddy allegedly.